So I had a comment on the channel that my videos are going backward in, uh, in this person's words because I was previously talking exclusively about sugar dating. And now some of my more recent videos, I'm getting into more of talking about the meta, like maybe the background about why I think and feel the way I do about relating to women and relationships. And I thought it was helpful. I thought some of that relate, some of that sort of deeper insight into why I operate the way that I do would be helpful to some guys who are struggling or curious or interested in doing better in this area. Personally, I think a lot of the information, advice, common knowledge that people talk about dating and relationships is actually super counterproductive. And I heard a little bit of that in the comment that this person left. So he actually deleted the comment. Uh, shout out to you. You didn't have to do that. But he said that, first of all, that sugar dating is the best thing available in this dating market. And um, I kind of somewhat agree. I think that sugar dating is probably a great option. It, it's fun. It could definitely be fun. You can have these experiences that you may have been desiring for your entire life. Since you were a, young, a teenager or a young man, you might have desired to be with certain types of women, but just for whatever reason, you haven't been able to meet and attract those women through your other methods. And that's okay. That's actually kind of the main thing that I wanted to bring up in this video and then in, in my content is that it's okay if you have a fantasy ideal of a woman in your head that you would like to experience being with. And if you haven't come across that woman or been able to build a relationship with that woman through Tinder, Bumble, cold approach, social circle, church, the library, school, you can still have those experiences. And actually, you sort of deserve it. If you're at a point in your life where you can sugar date, you've worked hard enough that you deserve to have the things that you want. And it doesn't do you any good to, de to deny yourself to deny yourself that experience if you can have it. And this is just one more way to do that. Do I think sugar dating is the best, the best thing on the dating market? Uh, first of all, I don't like to use the term the dating market. When I hear guys or people or in the comments or on Twitter, when people use the phrase the dating market, I just have a feeling that they've been spending way too much time watching uh, videos and podcasts about relationships and not nearly enough time actually in relationships. That would be a great title for this video or another one, which is like, spend more time talking to women than you'd spend talking about women or listening to red pill podcasts and YouTube channels about women. Not to bash on the red pill because I mean, they make a lot of good points. I was really immersed in red pill ideology for several years of my life. Some of it was positive and some of it wasn't. What I got with understanding more about the quote unquote red pill is I started understanding things things that people like lie about, like, oh, well, women like, you know, guys that treat them well and hold out, hold the door and, you know, give them flowers and candy and write poems and stuff like that. So you see that in movies, but then when you do that stuff in your real life, almost, almost a hundred percent of the time, it never works. In fact, it backfires. And instead of the girl being like, oh, this is so wonderful. You bought me flowers and you wrote me a poem. She'll actually think you're like a stalker. So the, what the red pill did was make me feel like, okay, I'm not crazy. I'm not the only one that's like doing the things I see in movies and TV and watching it blow up in my face every fucking time. And it was a little bit more of an insight into it. There's also a really good book that y'all should read called The Rational Male. In fact, if you would read The Rational Male, you could actually never watch another podcast or YouTube channel ever again because every single one of them, every single one of them just takes concepts and theories that were brought about in the rational mail and remixes them, rehashes them, makes some videos about it, brings on eight Instagram models and talks about things that Rolo uh, Tomasi already covered in the rational mail. So if you want to just do yourself a favor, read that book. You could read the rational mail. You could read the three percent, a 3% man by coach Corey Wayne, and you could read mysteries book. And you actually, if you would read those three books, you could skip every single red pill video, hours and hours of red pill content. So basically, I wanted to address this comment too because he said that sugar dating is the best thing in this dating market and my videos are going backward because I'm not just talking about sugar dating anymore. So I actually am curious what y'all think in the comments below. You can let me know if you think the videos are going backwards because I'm exploring more of, of dating and relationships and not just talking about sugar dating. Um, it's just because I figured, well, I'll say this. I was dating, recently have been dating on regular apps more than just exclusively sugar dating. So I wanted to talk about some of those experiences. Having the having the familiarity with sugar and doing traditional dating like Bumble and Hinge and Tinder, um, it kind of gives you ability to play both sides. 
you actually could date like women date because women, not all, but most or some or some women when they're uh, very attractive, especially if they're younger, they kind of just date frivolously. They're just having fun. They'll go out with this guy on Monday and he'll take them somewhere. They'll go out with this other guy and he'll take them a different place. They got a sugar daddy. They got a guy with abs at the gym. They just, and it's all these different things are sort of just like sampling. Not all, but some are just sampling out of a, out of a buffet. And sugar dating kind of allows you, if you're a a man, to do that as well, where you can just kind of sample, okay, I'll take this girl, this place, or don't take them anywhere. Take them very back to the house. I I can make a video about that. Do you have to go on dates with sugar babies, or can you just invite them directly over to your house? I mean, it depends on if they come. If you you message them on the app and they want to come over without you going to dinner or getting a drink at a bar, why not? You know, you don't have to take them anywhere. I like, I like to go on dates. I like, I like it because it sort of builds up the anticipation, kind of getting to know each other, getting a vibe, getting a familiarity, you know, to where we know each other. Then I'm more comfortable and I'm more relaxed when we come back to my house or if we go to a hotel or something like that. So but people can do what they want. In terms of the dating, the quote unquote dating market, I personally think that thinking of dating as a market, even though I understand why people use that term and I, I get it where it comes from. When you're too obsessed with what the dating market is doing, like how could you possibly be present in your own interactions with women? Because you're not, you're not, you're not like a single individual person sitting there talking to another single individual woman. You're seeing her as instead of seeing her as an individual by herself, you're seeing her as women, like capital W women, a collective. And instead of treating her like an individual, you're treating her like oh well, women only. Uh, you know, find 20% of men attractive and women only do this and women initiate 80% of divorces and women do all this stuff. And it's all true. But do you understand that if you have all of that in your mind in this, do you, if you have all that in your mind, when you're relating to a woman, even in conversation, uh, in texting, if you're messaging on a dating app, do you see how that will color your experience of that woman? And it will influence like the way that you act, the way that you talk, the way that you treat her, and in turn, it will influence the way that she treats you, right? So what I'm saying is, even though I I'm, I'm can't dispute the data and the facts that we all know, when you're sitting there obsessed with the statistics about the dating market and 3% of guys get X, Y, and Z and 20% of guys do this, it's accurate. It is accurate. When you have that in mind, it kind of makes you come off a lot of times as bitter, as cynical, like you hate women, and you can't hide that. If you have a beef with women, you you dislike women or you're angry with women, you're not going to be able to hide that from an actual woman who's sitting across from you on a date, even if you could get her there, right? Because you people could sense it off of you. They sense a bitterness, a cynicism off of you, and it's unattractive. So then you go back. So basically what happens is it's a spiral. It's a spiral. You are like, well, 80% of women do X, Y, and Z, and this and that. So then you, if you can get a match and a date, you go on this date and you're talking to this woman, but you're angry at women about statistics and facts and data that might not have anything to do with that woman sitting in front of you. Might not have anything to do with her. So you're angry, you have the cynicism, you have this negative energy, and she probably will reject you. If not immediately after, it's hard to hide that. If you, have, if you have a seething resentment toward women, it's hard to hide that over a very long period of time. So after a few dates, it could be one date, it could be five, it could be six, not very long. She senses that and she pushes you away. She rejects you. But then you go back, you go back to the internet. You go back to the comment section. You go back to Twitter saying, oh, these chicks do this, these chicks do that. And you, you're making it be about, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy is what I'm saying. So I'm not telling you not to sugar date. I can make more videos about sugar dating. I feel like I've covered the majority of the main points. Use sugar daddy meet and or seeking. Create a bio that talks about what you want, what you want from the other person, what who you are and what you want from the other person. Message them like a normal human being. Pay them the PPM that they ask for. Have a good time and treat the person respectfully. The end. That's the whole thing. That's my entire message right there. I can make more videos breaking down every single piece of that, uh, piece of that process is if you would like to, but that's the whole thing. In conclusion, in closing, I'm just going to say that I don't think that sugar dating is the best thing in the current dating market. I think sugar dating is a tool. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's something that you should explore if you have the ability to. And I also think that you maybe want to have 
other types of relationships with women that are not that are not based as transactionally as that one, even though I've also made videos saying that all relationships are transactional. I, be, I believe that. All right, so basically I wanted to respond to that comment. I am going to do videos that I think can help you all out and also videos that I think our topics are important. Like I still have to sit here and talk about this. If, I don't, if I'm not interested in the topic, then what's even the point of me doing this, right? So if you guys have any other questions and t videos that you want me to make, just leave a comment down below. I'm happy to do that. Like the video and subscribe. I continue to make more videos on topics which I think are relevant to y'all and things that I want to talk about because I'm interested in them. And hopefully we can just keep, just keep this whole thing going. All right. See y'all in the next one. Peace.